Greetings, friends, and welcome to the first Sawan animatronic system build. We're building a linear actuator. I don't know what the actual name is. It turns radial motion into a linear motion. Regardless, right off the bat, we're going to go through all the pieces that you need to get this thing built. First thing we're going to do is work on the base. Now, depending on where you put this and make it all work, you might change this up a bit, but this is just one and a half inch lumber. This is about a three inch space. Yeah, just about a three inch space. And then you want to make sure that from the bottom to like from about here, well, you go from the bottom because it's easier number, do at least four and three quarters, even five won't hurt. Four and three quarters is the best. So if you just go from the bottom here up to here, the four and three quarters is where you're going to be mounting the 12 inch drawer slide, which is here. Now, right here, you will be using an M4 12 millimeter bolt. And if you look closely, there is a washer on the underside, a washer on the top, and a nut. And all that does is it allows this bearing to rotate because we're going to be interfacing with that. And then once you've got that, you can just put in the two screws to hold the drawer slide on, uh, one there and one there. And that's exactly how you do it. You pull it out to get it in. Once you've got this to this spot, you will get and print a P007, and this is your motor mount. And what goes in the motor mount? Well, this five RPM high torque turbo trimmed motor. It's 12 volts DC, which you will need a 12 volt DC adapter for. And then I just use these clip connectors to connect it all together because it just makes life that much easier. So once you've got that all wired up and soldered up, you're just going to drop that in using this M3 bolt. You're just going to spin it in. And what it does is it holds it in place and that'll stop the motor from moving around. Once you've got to this stage, we're going to move through onto the actual arms. Now here, oh, before I forget, the bearing on that is an MR1262RS. I'll have all this stuff listed down below. This is the standard bearing I'm using in everything here. So whenever I'm referring to a bearing on this build, it's these ones. It's pretty much just a 12 millimeter outside diameter, six millimeter inside diameter by four millimeters thick. Okay, so now we're gonna build the actual articulation arm that hooks up to said motor. Let's see if I can get this there. So the first thing we're going to need is, this is going to be a P, 0008. This is a four millimeter motor shaft interface. You'll need one of those printed and then you will need a P0006 four millimeter bearing end. And this comes with two pieces. And the other thing you're going to need is an M3 12 millimeter, an M3 12 millimeter bolt. And what that does is that goes through the back and goes into here, so when we tie this front in, that it holds it all together. Now, once you've got those pieces all ready to go, you're going to need one three millimeter, not three millimeter, <laughs> one three inch uh, beam. This is a four millimeter beam, and one eight inch four millimeter beam. Those bearings that I said before, you want to press fit one into this end here, because then, that's pretty much the only one we have to press with because this actually goes and laps onto the top. So now the base we're going to assemble and you're gonna see how easy this stuff goes together. So your motor mount, you want to stick through, line it up like so, make sure that those two sides go in and click it into place. And you'll see that how you've got your motor mount now. Now opposing, you wanna make sure that this one here is to the outside and once again, you're just gonna line it up and stick it in. Oh, make sure it's completely lined up. Doesn't like it if it's not perfect, there we go. So, beautiful. I don't know why that's sticking out a tiny, tiny bit. Anyways, not a big deal. So now we've got our motor and our, our main motor shaft. This is what's going to connect to here. And you'll see right through here, this is the channeled hookup for this. We're not gonna put it on just yet because we're going to put together the bearing end here. So with the bearing end, we're going to put this here 
over top. And then this is that cap that comes with it. That goes through the center of the bearing. So it sits like this. And then that interfaces with that and clicks into place. Using an Allen wrench and that, that bolt, just spin it into place. And it'll firm up this whole joint beautifully. And what's nice about this now is once this is in, go. Once it's in, you'll see how beautifully that thing swings. That's because of the way everything is built on this to use bearings. It kind of keeps everything nice and smooth. Now, once we've got to this point, we're going to take our motor, we're going to find that index, and we're going to line it up and push it all the way down. That'll get it hooked onto there. Now you'll see how the shaft comes to the outside. If it goes to the inside, it'll bind when it comes around. So whenever you're dealing with shafts like this, you wanna make sure you're building out rather than in. You're going to find your uh, M3 16 millimeter bolt. And on here, on that shaft, you will see that there's a spot for a bolt. This is so important because this is what takes up the load of that keyed index. So once you've got that, make sure before you test this thing that everything goes together. So I'm just gonna spin that in. What that happens is, is the flat of the, of the drive shaft hits up against the bolt when it torques up. So it takes the weight and doesn't strip out the plastic. So if you don't put this bolt in, you're going to end up with bigger problems. Okay. And I'm doing this live because I want to show you how easy it is to assemble these things once you've got it all together, of course. Now we're going to take this end shaft point here. We're going to extend our drawer slide to the point that it goes on. We're just going to slide that over top. And just like that, that is our full mechanism. Just one second. All right. Here. So now we've plugged it in and you can see how it all slides. You just have to watch this clearance here. When it comes through, these beams have a little bit of bend in them, so just make sure that you have that clearance when it goes through and hooks up. And you can see just how beautifully smooth this mechanism is. When I first tested it on my old design, I was able to get to a kilogram. I'm not sure what the actual load on here is, but it should be pretty good. It has a bit of a squeak on its return when it gets load bare, when it's got load bearing, but this is all stuff you can figure out for what you're going to do in your specific situation. But as you can see, it's a beautifully smooth and very easy to assemble animatronic mechanism. And that's it for this one. It's built and running and you saw how easy it is. Just a few extra notes. Everything here is printed in PETG with 1.2 millimeter walls and 20% gyroid infill. Very important because it makes it super strong. If your slicer doesn't have access to gyroid, because I don't know if it's like a Kira thing or not, if just go with a bit denser of uh, infill because it makes everything that little bit stronger. Now, uh, it's going to turn that off. So now I'm setting up a Discord for as a forum so we can talk about these pieces. None of these are exactly perfect. I've tried to get all of the bugs worked out of it, but I'm just I'm just a simple designer and sometimes this stuff falls almost into the realm of engineering, which I'm trying my best, but please understand that I'm just me putting these things together. All of the components that I've used are going to be linked below on Amazon as shoppable pieces and all of the 3D printed elements will be on my website as a free download. I'm keeping these things free as much as possible. If somebody asks me for a very specific mechanism, I might have to put that one up because of the amount of time it takes to put these in. But please be patient with me. I am working hard to make these things work. And if they end up with bugs, please talk to me about it or issues that you run into. And I will, I can revisit the designs to make sure that they're gonna work for whatever we're building them for. Now, uh, this whole mechanism all said and done is maybe, maybe $20 at maximum, $25 worth of components. 
and the biggest being the motor, which I think is $15. You can do so much with this stuff, and as we go along, we're going to be adding more. Um, regardless, check out the Discord if you want to talk about new pieces and pieces you'd like to be seen, like uh, the reindeer motor interface that I've had somebody ask about because you, that different pegging on it. Everything can be changed. I just need measurements if you have them, and that's the best place to discuss those over on Discord. Um, regardless, this is fun, and I'm looking forward to building a whole bunch of different mechanisms for us all to enjoy. And uh, if you have any questions, throw a comment, uh, let me know, and we'll continue to build really cool things like this. Anyways, thanks so much to my subscribers who are now numbering in the 4,000s, which is crazy. Um, my viewers, you guys are amazing. Everybody who watches my channel, and a big, big thanks to my patrons who throw me a little bit each month so I can find the time and the money to go buy all this stuff so we can have these nice things. It really does help. Anyways, um, if you have any questions, ask in the comments. It's pretty straightforward, but everything should be linked. Regardless, the first step of a thousand mile journey begins with a single step, but really, I did not. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that be. Have a good one, all.